As one year passes and another begins, one must take the time to see where one's been. At Michigan Magazine, it's always an overwhelming experience when we do that. So many people have shared their dreams and lives with us on our weekly television get-together. It's such a great feeling to know that dreams do come true for those who believe and act on their beliefs. From butchers, bakers, candlestick makers, yes, and even Indian chiefs, the tapestry of Michigan citizenry is woven tightly with brightly colored threads of diversity. It truly is a Great Lake state. The talent and artistry of those that live here is always inspiring. Join us now as we take you on another whirlwind tour in celebration of Michigan and her people. It's always an incredible experience to visit with a passionate Michigan artist. For with passion usually comes an appreciation of the life they extol on canvas, along with an insight and frank opinions of their observations. Some of the more passionate make their love of their art their life's work such as the case in Ruth Ann Morsino of Kingston, Michigan, whose love of her work has opened wonderful new avenues associated with her talent, from giving classes to creating an annual art expo on the property of her rural home. Ruth Ann is truly living an artist's dream come true. This we learned in a recent visit to her home and studio. Ruth's wonderful renditions of Michigan wildlife and outdoors will take your breath away. You'll not only find Ruth's art at her home studio, but also at the Michigan Magazine Museum, which is where we head to next, from Kingston to Cummins, into the museum kitchen, where we find Del Vaughn sharing with a museum audience his mother's buttermilk hotcake recipe and his wife Garnita's zucchini bread recipe. The special thing about our museum cooking segments is the chance we get to let our viewers try firsthand what comes out of our family and friends' cookbooks. Well, well, let's get right over here and try this out. Hey, hey, it's not every day that I get a chance to serve anybody but my wife. Well, I've tried this many times, but I'll try it again just to make sure that the recipe is right, okay? Here we go. Mm. Mm -mm. Mother, I'll tell you what, I owe you a world of thanks. It still is a very delicious recipe. Well, as you can see, once again, we are right here in the kitchen. And out of our recipe book, we are going to go with a, a recipe that my wife has submitted. And uh, zucchini bread. Supervising down in the kitchen during this segment was his wife, Garnita, making sure everything went well, which it did. Mm, good, according to those in attendance. Thanks to everyone who helped us out that day in the Michigan Magazine Museum kitchen. Delicious Michigan food has always been a tradition at Michigan Magazine. Tradition and old world ways are yours to enjoy at a place called Herman's Boy, formerly known as the Melting Pot, nestled in the picturesque community of Rockford, just a bit north of Grand Rapids. Here, Herman's Boy, Floyd Havemeyer, and family have created a bit of Americana with an array of wonderful specialty coffees, teas, and foods. As you step into the front door, you're greeted by aromas sure to spark memories of Grandma's kitchen. The sights and smells are special treat by themselves. At first glance, you'll think you've traveled back in time into the old general store with its many glass cases and wooden bins filled with delicious surprises. The main part of the Havmeyer's business is their coffee roasting, with a history going back 100 years. Family operations are what we like to highlight here at Michigan Magazine, whether it be the Havemeyers of Herman's Boy or the Monahan family of Gladwin. Pleasing people with their creativity is a trademark of the Monahans. Changing direction in midlife is a common theme among those we visit. As we travel the back roads, we find more and more people are making it on their own, doing something they love to do. Near the real Presque Hill County community of Posen, just off of M65, you'll find a picturesque log farmhouse surrounded by acres of rolling meadows. Many of those acres dedicated to gardens of flowers and herbs. The adjacent barn and greenhouse also houses countless other plants in various stages of growing and drying. These annuals, preannuals, and herbs will eventually make it to the creative hands of the Terratutas, Netta and her husband Dennis. For 25 years, the Terratutas were in the dairy farm business, but out of necessity, they found themselves having to change their direction dramatically. That change eventually resulted into a business called Handmade by Netta. The dairy farm soon took on the look of one big beautiful garden show place. Step inside their home and a virtual wonderland of wreaths, dried and freeze-dried flowers, handmade by Terratutas, will astound you. You'll also find a fantastic display of other items crafted by other local artisans. We were drawn down their country lane not only by the beauty of the gardens, but by something else in the air. Huh. You'll see the Terratuta Farm is also known for their delicious homemade bread. 
baked from an old family recipe handed down to Netta by her mother. From Posen to Mount Pleasant, Michigan Magazine has been known to follow their noses when delicious Michigan food is concerned. Nothing can compare to the wonderful taste of hot ribs straight off the barbecue grill. In fact, that was proven at the last Michigan Magazine Expo on the Michigan Magazine Museum grounds, proven by experts in the field of not only barbecuing ribs, chicken, and fish, but also in the field of barbecue construction. They call themselves Oak Ridge Kitchens. Based in Mount Pleasant, Michigan, owners Mike and Linda Bliss are gaining statewide recognition at not only fairs and special events for the wonderful barbecue and smoked roasted meat products, but also for the barbecue units they manufacture that range in size from the backyard home units to big festival smokers and barbecuers they were utilizing at the Michigan Magazine Expo. These two Northern Michigan entrepreneurs have even branched off into the barbecue sauce and seasoning business with their own delicious line. Good old-fashioned American barbecued ribs, chicken, and fish can't be beat. But if you're in the mood for something a little more international, it's still possible to stay within the borders of Michigan to satisfy your curiosity. When you dream of Scandinavia, your dreams are of the romantic locations of Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Finland, and Iceland. Far away from the Great Lakes, although it's thousands of miles away, Michigan has a large population that can truly call this area of the world their homeland. In our previous visits to a place called Punzo's in the Buckley area near Traverse City, we found that the culture is truly unique in their food, heritage, and lifestyle, both very intriguing. It was with delight that we discovered another Scandinavian adventure in the southern part of Michigan recently opening with a virtual potpourri of authentic and hand-picked products. It's called Sweet Anne's Boutique and is located near Baldwin and Clarkston Roads, about six miles out of Clarkston in a rural setting. Now the southern part of the state has access to those wonderful Scandinavian treasures thanks to a husband and wife team that actually travels there to scour the countrysides to bring back to Michigan authentic gifts and food. Owners Ann and Ron Bentley are the most gracious hosts, telling us that not only Scandinavian gifts and food may be found at Sweet Anne's, but also unique classes in Swedish language and culture is taught weekly. Another innovative product coming from creative Michigan minds to fill a specialty niche is something called Virtual Rocks. From the rolling hills of northwestern lower Michigan comes the creativity of the Morton Brothers. Wally and Mark, owners of the Morton Company, producers of Virtual Rocks. You heard right. From the heart of Michigan's Leelanau County, these two harvest stones and rocks for molds of a virtual rock process that is the basis for two unique products, logo stones and cover stones. The replicas are exact down to the outer exterior. The only way to tell the difference from the real thing is the weight. The Morton Company was founded in 1993 by Wally and Mark after purchasing their father's business, which worked making specialty fiberglass products for many years for companies like John Deere and Kubota Tractor Corporation. The two found it necessary to take innovative action to diversify and counter the dwindling farming business. The avenues of opportunity led them to a creative new use of their expertise in fiberglass. And that in turn has turned into a line of products being sought not only by homeowners, but by big businesses and corporations, building images through logo implementation on virtual rocks. From Northport, our sites are set south to Freeland, Michigan, and another new company that has created a unique line of clothing dedicated to something near and dear to the heart of nearly every Michigan citizen, the log cabin. Tell the folks out there how this come about, would you please? Well, when Terry and I bought the business, we were also at the time getting married and building a log home and a lot of other things, and I'd been looking through magazines to design our home for quite a while and noticed that nobody really had any clothing that went with the mindset of a log cabin and that kind of thing. And so I just said, well, hey, this could be a place where we could get in at the ground floor, offer people what we're seeing as the weekend state of mind throughout the week, a place where you put on comfortable clothing, go home, relax, that kind of thing, but feel like that all the time. Terry came from a business where he had to wear a suit and tie five days a week. So in this business, yeah. he, could, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he could wear comfortable, casual clothing. Yeah. And Some that was our whole mindset of doing the whole thing was the people that like this kind of thing are the log home lovers, that kind of stuff. The great outdoors. The great outdoors. And being a biologist yeah. myself before uh -huh. we bought the business, that was kind of 
my uh -huh. love of uh -huh. sorts is that the nature type Being stuff, outside you know? and getting through Mother Nature. Terry and Marie Grinnell of Saginaw Knitting in Freeland, another wonderful example of how a husband and wife team are filling that specialty niche and doing something they love to do, Cabin Fever Creations. Another true family tradition on this whirlwind tour of some of our best takes us to a small Michigan community of Mears and Moratt's Old Fashioned Bakery. A true step back in time. It's unusual because it's a little out of the way, but people are coming here and discovering unique delicacies here. And some of the uh, things that you bake here are being uh, shipped to other parts of the United States, isn't it? That's right. And we're here with Dan and Jane Marat of the Tiffany Bakery. So we opened a pie shop. And uh, Jane said she remembered that there was a bakery in this building here back when she was a little girl. She was from Mears. Oh. So you, you're, this and used to be a bake shop? So this used to be a bake shop, started in 1915, it was built for a bakery. Mm -hmm. And it ran as a bakery by Webb Tiffany, is which we took the name from, mm -hmm. and until he retired in 1946. And it sat empty until we opened it up five summers ago. You heard right, this quaint little bake shop stood idle for nearly half a century, standing sleepily unnoticed in the streets of Mears, until owner Ed Johnson agreed to allow the Marats to continue the baking tradition at the shop. The Tiffany Bake Shop is fondly recalled by many of the elders in the community as a special place of sweet smells and warm memories. Ed told us these memories are now being revived along with new ones made by the Marats. The great outdoors is a subject of many Michigan artists. With what we have in our state, it is no wonder so many inspired photographers can be found, like Carl Sams and Gene Stonick. Well, I, I grew up on an on island on, on the Asaba River. And from the time I was a little kid, I hunted and fished. And um, Jeannie was an art teacher, and, and she sort of encouraged me to get into photography. And uh, once I got a, a camera in my hand, it was all over. You know, we, I tried all these different art, art projects, but uh, photography was, uh, uh, well, it caused me to sell my guns and bowls for a down payment on a lens. And <laughs> you now I can shoot 40,000 deer and not be arrested and have yeah. no seasons, no license. And, yeah. Okay. This is a chance to tell some of the stories uh, uh, about our, our images, uh, particularly when we run into the people at um, the various shows that we do on weekends. There's an awful lot of people who um, have uh, new gained interest in, in wildlife, mm -hmm. and they get very excited and uh, emotional uh, about some of the stories that oh, we okay. tell um, relating to our, our photographs. For our true taste of Michigan, our journey takes us next to Bay City. It's always a treat when we discover something different cooking. The UP is a favorite place to visit for Michigan Magazine, and one of our favorite artists is Dave Wally, whose copper art is known throughout the world. Uh, every, every piece is unique. In yeah, every its own. piece is a little different. Right. It's, it's copper. Uh, we have a few pieces that are the copper color, but it's copper. What we're really selling is color. Color. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, here's, I'll do a leaf here that I like the best anyway. Use a lighter color. And there's just a little more here. We get a little bit of orange in here up on the tips there. Oh, we haven't gotten the blue here yet, have blue. we? Blue. So we'll go with the green here first. <laughs> How long did it take you to develop the, and understand these colors? Quite a while, or is oh, it? Oh, I've been at this for we've been over 20 years now. Yeah. Now we can watch the purple. See, I'm in there. I'm oh. in there for a little while. See? Yeah. Look at that. I can't imagine. Yeah, all that color. Like that. Pride in creating a world-class Michigan product is what we discovered in a visit to a small family winery near Kalamazoo, as we visited with Duane Peterson of Peterson & Son Winery. What makes your wine so different from many of the others, Duane? Well, there's only three of us in the United States that don't use any chemicals. That's our big claim to mm -hmm. fame. And uh, we're also the only winery in the world that washes the grapes before they're crushed. And all our fruit is hand-picked and sorted. Uh, and we're also the only one that gives you a 25-cent refund on the empty bottle. If you rent it out and bring it back to us or one of the stores, uh, you don't pay a deposit. We actually buy the glass back and recycle it. Some of these bottles have been around here since, uh, actually since I started, mm -hmm. 1983. History and preservation is another love of ours at Michigan Magazine. An example of that was when we visited with Laura Ashley 
who headed the department responsible for the Michigan Historical Marker Program. The current marker program began in 1955 when the Michigan Historical Commission began erecting markers around the state. They obtained legislation that created the State Register of Historic Sites and the marker program. And prior to 1955, there had been some plaques erected. They were bronze plaques, very different from the markers that we have today. But with World War II and the conservation of metals, that program never really got off the ground. So then in 1955, Public Act 10 was passed by the legislature, and it created the State Register of Historic Sites and the marker program. And um, since then, as I said, over 1,100 have been erected. Mm -hmm. The first markers were paid for by the state, but since the late 60s, early 1970s, they've been publicly funded. With over half of Michigan covered with forest, it's only natural the woodworking artist is drawn to this hardwood beauty. We've met and visited with countless crafters and artisans that create wonderful works of art from our natural abundance. We hope you've enjoyed this whirlwind tour of some of our favorite stories we've shared with you on Michigan Magazine. And we hope you'll join us each week as we continue to discover more stories of inspiration, which we hope to share with you in the coming years. Please remember, for more information on any of the stories you've seen on Michigan Magazine, call us or visit our website to utilize our fast search engine at the bottom of our homepage at www.michiganmagazine.com.